In Creo Parametric, you can use a table profile for a mechanism motor when you can't explain the motion in terms of one of the other profiles or you don't want to. Let's take a look at an example. Here I have an assembly. It is for a solar array. I want to simulate the deployment of this solar array. Let me jump into mechanism mode. I will go to applications and then mechanism. This particular assembly already has two motors in it for deploying the panels themselves, but I want to create two different motors for the gimbal down here at the bottom. So first off, I have a joint and I want this to rotate through 90 degrees, but I don't want it to be at a constant 90 degrees. I don't want it to have a full ramp over the time. I want it to ramp up to a value, state the value for a while, and then ramp down. So let me select the joint that I want to move. And then from the mini toolbar, I can use the servo motor command. And this opens up the dashboard for the servo motor. First thing I'm going to do in this particular situation, I want to drive the angular velocity instead of the angular position. I'm going to open up the profile details tab and let me move this over a little bit. I just doing a little bit of right hand rule with the way that the arrow is pointing. I realized that I want to flip the direction of the motor. I want it to go sort of like clockwise in this orientation as opposed to counterclockwise. And so now let's define the profile for the initial state. Yes, I want to use the current position as initial. That's good. And then for the function type, well, here you can see the other different kinds of profiles that you have available to you. We've got a constant, ramp, cosine, cycloidal, parabolic, polynomial. These are all in terms of equations. And if you can't use one of those equations, you can use a table instead. So I will select that and it opens up the table specification area. First off, we can choose whether we want to do a linear fit between the different times and values that we specify, a spline fit, or a monotonic fit. So first off, if you're using a linear fit, this is important. You have to use a position analysis, not a kinematic analysis. If you're using a kinematic analysis, any linear table specifications will default to spline. So that's something that you definitely want to know about. With a monotonic, what that means is that the entire profile will be made to be entirely increasing or entirely decreasing. When you're using a spline through a bunch of points, it can end up going negative in order to fit the curve through a bunch of different points, but monotonic will avoid that. I'm just going to do a simple linear profile, and I'm just going to put four lines in here. Let me crank up the number of lines to four, and then this button allows me to add rows to the table. And so I'll start out at zero and I'll leave it with a value of zero degrees per second. And then I want it to ramp up over three seconds to 10 degrees per second. And so since that is a ramp, that would end up giving me 15 degrees of total motion. You can do the math, one half base times height. Then over the next six seconds, out to a value of nine seconds, I want it to stay at that value of 10. And then over the next three seconds, out to 12 seconds, I want it to ramp back down. And so if I want to see what this motion looks like, I can choose if I want to graph the position and velocity. Depending on the situation, you can also graph the acceleration. And you can do it in separate graphs, but I'm going to graph it in the same graph. I will click on this button. And here I can see in blue the profile that I'm getting. It's ramping up to a value, staying constant, and then ramping back down. And here I can see how it is deploying. And so the reason I'm doing this, maybe I'm trying to simulate how the motor would actually ramp up to a certain speed and then ramp back down. But the important thing is through the 12 seconds of this motion, it will end up rotating through 90 degrees. So I am happy with this particular graph. I'm happy with this motion that I'm getting. Let me close the chart tool. And one thing to note is that rather than entering all these different values manually, 
you do have the ability to read in files, or excuse me, read in values from a file if you have them in like a text file. So this is good for this profile that I am creating. Let me hit the check mark in order to create it. And actually, let me rename this one. Let me call this my gimbal motor one. I think gimbal is misspelled in my assembly, but I will use the same spelling. Gimbal motor one. Okay, and I'm just gonna create another one of those real quick for this one over here. Let me select this joint axis. And instead of using the icon from the mini toolbar, I can choose the icon from the ribbon. And let me check my right hand rule. Yep, I, it's rotating in the right direction. I don't need to flip the direction. Let's go to our profile detail. I'm gonna drive the angular velocity. And I'm gonna use the same profile as before. Let's use table, let's use linear, let's do four points. And let me just type in the values, three, nine, and 12 for the seconds. And 10 degrees per second at the two intermediate values. So that's good. Let me go to the properties tab. Let me change this to gimbal motor two. And hit the check marks. Now let's see our motion. I'm going to create a brand new analysis. You can do that from the mechanism analysis icon or you can right click on the analyses choice in the mechanism tree and use the new icon. And let me call this deploy for what it's going to do. And again, since I'm using a linear fit in my table profiles, it's gotta be position analysis. If you use kinematic, you're going to end up getting different motion than you expect because it's actually going to use a spline fit. So anyhow, position is good. And I'm going to have this analysis run for a total of 48 seconds. And let me crank up the frame rate. 25 frames per second. That's what I like. Let me use a snapshot. And I know that the snapshot called home has the same starting position. Let me move this out over here. Let me go to the motors tab. So it puts all the different motors in here. And I actually want it to start with gimbal motor one. And this is going to go out to 12 seconds. Then I want this one to run for 12 seconds. And let's see, then I want the second panel one to run for 12 seconds. And then I want the second table profile that I created here to run. So let's have that go from 36 to 48, which is actually the end. I think I might've added a little garbage there when I typed, let me delete that extraneous bit. All right, so I think everything is good. I can try running this. And there you have it. That's how I was able to use a table to drive the motors for the gimbal.